we're going on to meiosis. Now, people, you remember we had mitosis. And you know what? They are quite capable of asking you for a comparison between meiosis and mitosis. Mitosis was for growth, for repair, for replacement, and for reproduction in unicellular unicellular organisms okay now let's think about this mitosis growth your cells have to grow your hair grows your nails grow you grow in size you grow in weight you decrease in weight you grow in weight um, people that do gym, guys that train. My son at the moment is going nuts for gym training and fitness training for rugby. What's happening? The body has to make new muscle cells. Why? Because it says, oh my gosh, I can't cope with the 10 I've got. I'm going to have to make 15 or 20 or 100 or 1,000 or whatever the case is. Okay, so for growth, we have to fix things. We have to repair things when they break. So when cells break, we must replace them. Now, can you imagine that if you have uh, maybe a very dry lip and your lip cracks, and instead of um, lip cells growing there, you end up with heart cells pumping away, uh, so cardiac cells, or you end up with liver cells growing and, and, and just being made in place of your, your lips. No. Why? Because with mitosis, we start off with a diploid cell. Okay, it's a complete cell. It's got both pairs of chromosomes from mom, from dad. It is a perfect normal body cell. Okay, any body cell. It's called the somatic cell. And the diploid cell then literally duplicates. And when it duplicates, it makes an identical copy of itself. So, we have an absolute, it's like a photostat machine, all right? So, my lip cells, well, which lip cells are going to repair that hole? The other lip cells on the sides. Um, if there's a heart cell that dies, it's the heart cell next to it that's going to replace it. Do you, I mean, repair, uh, make a new one. So, you've always got identical cells, always. So, we start off with a diploid cell, and we end up with two identical they are identical in every possible way identical daughter cells okay perfect absolute duplicates so we're growing we're repairing we are replacing cells so if a cell gets damaged and hurt and it can't be repaired well Break it down into its basic components, which is carbohydrates, fats, lipids, and yay, goodbye, Mwah. have a wonderful day, clean out, sweep everything away and make a new one. So we have replacement. And then reproduction, but people look at this, unicellular. A unicellular organism is one cell. And if it's only one cell, okay, one cell, uh, there aren't any other cells around to help it reproduce. There are no sex organs to help it reproduce. It's one cell. So that one cell will become two. The two little cells will become four and eight and 16 and 32. And so we carry on. So that's how viruses grow. That, I mean, not virus, bacteria. That's how bacteria grow. It's a unicellular organism. Um, amoeba grows like that. Unicellular organism. One and then it duplicates itself, and it duplicates itself again, and it duplicates itself, and it carries on. So we go, in mitosis, we'll start off with one, one will make two, two will make four, four will make eight, eight will make 16, and before you know it, you have a complete bacterial infection. All right, now, we've got, that's mitosis. Now, how is meiosis different? Meiosis is for sexual rep 
reproduction. Okay, now, sexual reproduction means I have to take a half from the male, a half from the female, and I take the two halves and I put them together. Okay, Indy, does it make sense? It makes complete sense. If I took a whole male and a whole female and I put them together, we are going to have some real strange organism. All right, it has to have half the chromosomes in the egg cell and half, or the, the female cell, half from the male cell. We put the two halves together and we end up with the whole. Now, we are diploid. Diploid means we have a full component of chromosomes. Now, as humans, for example, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now, it's like pairs of socks. If you have two feet and you only have one sock because the washing machine ate it again, because there's a little gremlin in the washing machine that steals socks, okay? Well, hello, you don't have a sock for each foot. And you would look rather stupid going out with only one sock on one foot and the other foot without a sock. We need socks in pairs. The same with our chromosomes. They are always in pairs. So even if you get a diagram, people, during meiosis, um, and you get a diagram that only has one chromosome, you know that they're trying to catch you out. Why? You can never have an uneven number of chromosomes. They are always in pairs. They are always even numbers. So 23 pairs means I have 46 chromosomes. And that is normal for human beings. All right, now, of these 23 pairs of chromosomes, we are going to have 22 that are somatic, which means they are form part of body cells, and one is going to be your sex chromosomes. All right, but it's a pair. Now, of this pair, one came from your mother, and one came from your father. If you happen to be a wolf, or an Alsatian, or a Doberman pincher, or a mini dashi like my little Bobby Brown, you would have had one set of chromosomes, or one set of the socks, came from his mom, a sausage dog, and the other set came from his daddy, also a sausage dog. And you put them together, and I have my little Bobby Brown. And that's exactly the same as us humans. In fact, any multicellular organism that undergoes uh, uh, meiosis, sexual reproduction. So, we have our 23 pairs, this is for humans, and we have, which makes up 46. 22 are for body cells and one is for sex cells. These sex are going to be XX for female and XY for males. All right, now, during meiosis, what do we need to do? We have to take the diploid cell, okay, it's diploid, which means it has one set of chromosomes from the mum and one set of chromosomes from the dad. And those ended up coming together to make the baby, which is, or the offspring, which is diploid. Now, during meiosis, and this is how it's different from mitosis for growth, repair, replacement, and reproduction in unicellular organisms, here we have to halve that. So that when I have my half, I'm going to have my whole, and I end up with a half and a half, and during fertilization, I put the two halves together and I end up with a whole again, which is the baby. All right, so how do we do this? We say, okay, easy enough, piece of cake. We have the diploid cell. It is going to undergo the first myotic division. 
And what the first meiotic division is, it's called reduction division. Why? Because it takes the 2N and it divides it into an N and an N. So it literally halves the process. It halves the chromosomes in that cell. And it says, you know what? Let's split it. We have to take one set of the pair. It's going to go one side. And the other set of the pair will go that side. And that's what they do here. So it's reduction division, and we call that the first meiotic division. And then our second meiotic division We take this one and it duplicates itself. So this is duplication and I'm going to write duplication in inverted commas because it's my term for it. Okay, you have a duplication but your second meiotic division is very similar to mitosis where what you start off with, you duplicate. So it, you have an identical copy. And the, the reason why we do this is that in sperm, doing spermatogenesis, which you are going to be doing um, when you do reproduction, spermato means sperm, genesis means in the beginning, so or the creation. So spermatogenesis to make a sperm cell. And this process happens in the testicles. All right? And in the female human, we have oogenesis because we end up with an egg. All right? So we are making a new egg. We're making a new ogonia. So your oogenesis, we're making an egg. Spermatogenesis, okay, and that happens in the ovaries. And for the male, here we're going to have that process. We're making sperm cells. All right? Now, they are not identical. Why? Are these four daughter, uh, uh, um, uh, daughter cells, are they the same as that? No, they're different. All right, now. Kathy, hmm? why are they called daughter cells? Somebody is asking me why they're not called son cells or boy cells. <laughs> you have to understand from a very young age that us girls are more important. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that is the correct answer. No, I'm actually, it's, it's, it's the whole thing about mother, father, daughter. All right. So what they did was they spoke, they speak about paternal, maternal, paternal being the father, maternal being the mother, and your daughter cell is what results. They did, could have said your son cell, but then some people could have made the mistake of spelling it with a U and they thought, well, it's from the son and... It was just the choice of the scientists at the time. Okay, but they are your daughter cells. And in mitosis, we have two identical daughter cells after mitosis. And even Indiana's shaking her head, she understands. And in meiosis, it's sexual reproduction. We're first going to halve or reduce the, the, the diploid number. And now we have haploid gametes. So that is haploid. Okay, but now we need to make sure that we have enough. So in the male, those four are all going to be sperm. And in a female, one of them will be slightly larger. And that one will become the egg cell. And the other three will end up providing nutrition for the egg cell. Okay, so what, what do we end up with? We end up with this one egg cell being released by the ovary. So this part of meiosis, you have to understand people. And the reason for it is... You need to understand the principles of meiosis so that you can do genetics. And you need to understand genetics so that you can make sense of reproduction. I mean, does that, that make sense? It sort Makes of follows sense. on. It's yeah. a lovely syllabus because you're starting off with where you start from, okay, what you can end up with, and or, or how, the, how the gestation period goes, and what the result could be at the end of it. All right, and then we go on to evolution or, or diversity, why we are all so different, and we go to um, I genetic variations I and genetic and defects. Yes, and I remember this from last year. It was that my best section. I can't wait. 
you know, people fiddling with stuff and trying to make things different and artificial selection, all of that is part of one syllabus. So you're starting at one point and you're working your way through, and then you do, you do environment because if you, no, it doesn't matter where you come from, where you're going, if you don't look after your environment, I mean, Indy will, I can see her shaking her head here, if you don't look after your environment, people, well, we're going to have nowhere to go. We're going to just kill each other off anyway. All you have to remember, anaphase, I mean prophase, your chromosomes are sitting and they're sort of scattered everywhere. All right? And sometimes they're crossing over and sometimes they're not. So they're all over the show. That's prophase. Metaphase is easy because everything's in the middle. Anaphase, easy because everything's pulling towards the poles. Okay? Separating. Telophase, piece of cake because guess what? It's forming two cells. And if you remember that, to identify the difference between meiosis 1 or meiosis 2, piece of cake, I'll tell you why. In meiosis 1, what are you going to have? During prophase, you're going to see your crossing over. That's number one. Number two, your metaphase, you're going to have double chromosomes. Why? Because we have random assortment. All right, so let's go. Meiosis, cell division, prophase, what do we got? As I said to you, your chromosomes are sort of scattered around. Your, your um, spindle fibers are just forming. There are your centrosomes sitting over here. Everything's happy. Everything's comfortable. Let me just get a nice pink so we can see. Um, and your chromosomes are crossing over, and that's your chiasmata. As they cross over, they're swapping information, which is very important. All right, next slide. Um, okay, meta, middle. You see your chromosomes are lined up in the middle, and they line up independently. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, um, we're going to make, do this. This was a chromosome that this organism had from its mother. Okay? It's maternal chromosome. These are the homologous chromosomes. They're the pair for certain characteristics. So these two here would be for one lot of characteristics. And, and I've just moved this down. And I've moved it down horribly. Well, how did I do that? Oh, no. There's... Here we go. Very I must have pushed something by accident. Sorry, people. Okay, so that's your homologous chromosomes. They're homologous. They are the same for the same characteristics, okay? The genes for the same characteristics are situated there. All right, so that's from mom, and then dad's ones will do yellow. They're here. Okay, let's try green. Maybe that's better. Can we see? All right, so what have we got? And I left a piece of mom off there. So that's after the chiasma has taken place, the crossing over has taken place. We've randomly swapped genetic information from dad and from mom and put it together. All right, now those homologous chromosomes pull away. There's no division of the centromeres. You see them, that's very important. And we have everything lined up at the equator. It is in the middle. All right, next one. Anaphase. Here the chromosomes have pulled away, and they have randomly pulled away. So we could have had dad's one pulling, uh, dad's one here, I mean mom's one there, and mom's one here. But we could also have had it the other way around. So if I have four chromosomes, one and two are a pair, and three and four are a pair. One and four can end up being on one end, and, and, and two and three on the other end. Or it can be one and three and two and four, whatever the case is. It is random assortment. It's independent. There's nobody knows how it's going to pull out. That's why you do not look like your mother's 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 mother for the last ten generations. You look different. Why? You look like a combination of all your family traits. Why? Because of this. Two things. One, the chiasma. Two, the random and independent uh, uh, um, assortment here. 
The chromosomes go randomly. All right, next one. Now we go meiotic. Uh, the first meiotic division, there's your telophase, and we have a double-stranded chromosome. Cell membrane starts to constrict. So we have cytokinesis. The cytoplasm has now divided completely, and eventually we end up with the two daughter chromosomes. But people, they are not identical. Why? Because the one's got piece, more pieces from the mom, and the other one's got more pieces from the dad, and you've got dad's ones up here and mom's ones up there, maybe ten dad and two mom and, and, and five moms and three dad, whatever the case is. Independent assortment. All right? And that's what we end up with. Two unidentical daughter cells. Now, we move on to the second meiotic division. Now, remember, here we are duplicating. So, we're taking our haploid gamete and we are now making an identical copy of it. All right. Now, in the second meiotic division, we have metaphase. It's middle. All your chromosomes will be lined up in the middle. But people, please look at this. First of all, I've got two nuclei that they're showing me. But instead of having two rows of chromosomes, how many have I got here? I've got one. See? One row. Whereas in first meiotic division, in other words, meiosis one, I had double. I had my homologous chromosome sitting there. Now, I've only got one row of chromosomes. Okay, now what happens is this centromere splits. And the minute that centromere divides so that the daughter chromatids can move towards the poles, we say karyokinesis has occurred. Why? Because karyokinesis is the splitting of the nucleus. Okay? There's our anaphase. Anaphase, very easy to identify because the chromosomes are going to the poles. And in anaphase 1, our chromosomes had little butterflies like this. Okay? Pulling across, and here they look like that. And I, the reason I'm telling you this is that I'm not sticking to all the, the academic biff. is because I need for you to understand to be able to, to recognize what you're looking at, okay? So your daughter chromatids, your daughter chromatids, not your son chromatids, your daughter chromatids, are pulled towards the poles. As soon as they get to the poles, cytokinesis takes place, and they are then divided into four. But are they identical? No. Because in mitosis, you end up with two identical daughter cells with the same uh, um, ploidy. Here, they are half. So these are all haploid structures. They're haploid, all right? And they are not identical because they all contain bits and pieces from the, the, the homologous chromosomes that split in meiosis 1. Mindset learn, learn more, learn extra. Bye, guys.